Okay, so I am hyped to test various AIs on how they can help us to become better ethical hackers, better agent testers, smart developers, and all kind of uh, offensive gurus. And before I tested DeepSeek mainly, ChatGPT, but now it's time for something different and it's time for something called Drog AI. Essentially, this is the Twitter's AI, and not only it can read out and map a different kind of tweets and posts, but it can also write malware, and it's quite good at that. Now I started the whole chat with a very, very simple prompt, and that is, create a shellcode runner in C for a Windows system. That was it, and my idea here was super simple. I decided to test what's the general thinking of that AI, and how it can behave if I give him this kind of a generic task without any kinds of additional details. Now the first code uh, the Grok AI does is quite legit. It uses a shellcode for a message box, of course it tells us to replace that with what we need. Uh, it includes the libraries we need, which is Windows.h and STDR.h, and then what happens is first he allocates memory with virtual alloc, then he copies the, uh, the shellcode to the memory with memcopy, and then Grok AI creates a thread and code wait for a single object to wait the threads to execute. Now this code in theory works, yes, it works, it works nice, but that was not what I was looking for, because that's not the most evasive things to do. Because first, if you create a new thread, and then you call create for, uh, wait for a single object, sorry, you're gonna be detected super fast. So I was not happy with the answer, and after he explains how the code works, I was like, okay, but this time, can you execute it without the use of wait for a single object? Now this time Grok AI didn't do that good I can say, because what he does is he again used create thread, but this time he instantiated a sleep to, for example, wait the threads to execute, which I don't think is the best thing to do, because again, the new thread is created, which I was not happy of course with the new answer. And here I was like, okay, but this time, can you also not use create thread API? And he was like, okay. And now this answer actually satisfied me, because in this case, all the rest of the code is exactly the same, but this time he used a direct function pointer. Now I've already wrote a blog post about this technique, which is super amazing, and if you want, you can check the link into the description and read the blog post about these techniques. But essentially what happens is we have a pointer, we pass it the function, and we point that pointer to the beginning of the shellcode, which we treat now as a function which is for now, I can say, the most evasive things on how you can pretty much execute your shellcode, because I think it's super, super hard to trace. Now, I was happy with this result, but here I decided to dig a little bit more, and I was like, okay, which one of them was the most evasive? And now here is where the things became interesting. Now, first, the Grok AI make a nice comparison be between all the techniques that he used, essentially the create thread, wait for a single object, and direct pointer. He also gave us a nice table of checks of uh, evasiveness parameters for each one of the techniques, but essentially, he told us that the most evasive thing was indeed version 3, which is the function pointer. But now, here is where it gets interesting. Not only he says us which, which one of them was the most evasive, he actually gave us some practical tips on how to become even more evasive. I'm pausing the video just to say massive, massive thanks to all of my Patreon sponsors. Thank you so much, guys. You keep me motivated to build more content like that and to share even more experience. If you also have further appreciation to my work, don't hesitate and become my Patreon, where you're going to be added to a lot of projects. And also, we are starting our Patreon meetings. In these meetings, we're going to speak live, we're going to ask questions, share experience, and become better ethical hackers. Thank you so much, and moving on. First, he was like, you have to avoid the usage of read, write, execute memory regions. And that's 100% legit tip and recommendation. Because usually when you create a new memory, when you allocate it, for example, with virtual alloc, it's easier to just do uh, page read write execute but that's not most upset thing to do because that's a high high ioc what can be done better is as grok says here you can just create a new memory allocate it but use the flags for page read write so the memory is going to have only read and write access now after you write the shell code to the memory then you can modify its attribute and then make the memory page execute read so it's going to be read and execute this time you avoid the usage of read write execute memory, which is the better version of how the things could be done. 
And now, the crazy part. After that, Grok actually tells us that you have to obfuscate the shell code. You have to encrypt the shell code, which to me is super crazy because without me even asking about that, Grok AI implemented XOR decryption with its shell code runner. And that's huge. The ability to think ahead and to actually try to understand what you need and what you want is, I think, what makes this AI the best so far. Now, after he implements the code, uh, I was also, I also decided to dig deeper and I was not satisfied with that. I wanted to be set to be better. And I was like, okay, but now can you retrieve the shell code remotely from this address? And I just specified the HTTP address of my shellcode.bin file. Now he was like, okay, I can do that. Now in this case, he also used uh, win9.net.lib library, which is, which is uh, used for performing such kind of a remote connection over HTTP. He does everything that code works, which is quite nice, besides one simple thing, and that is the shellcode decryption part. Now, if you go to the shellcode decryption, which is, which is there, you can see that this way of shellcode decryption is nice, but it uses a single character key. That's something I used to avoid because if you use a single character key, it's going to be super easy for AVs and EDRs to predict and decrypt the shellcode and then analyze it, of course. So in that case, I decided to use something else. And that's just the one, the only one I can say missing point that Grok AI did not good. But I was, of course, able to correct him. So I was like, after this code, I was like, OK, but you forgot the sort of decryption because it was not added to the previous code. And after he added it, I was like, okay, the sort of decryption function works with single uh, with a single character key, modified to use multi-character key, for example, my key. And now Grok does just that. Not only he retrieves the shell code from remote HTTP server, but this time he also modifies the sort of decryption function to use a multi-character key. And now this was the final code the AI came up with. I stopped digging that deep so far and I was, okay, I need to try that. So I literally copied the code from there. I literally went to the command VM and pasted the code into Visual Studio. I did not modify anything whatsoever. I just clicked Ctrl S, compiled it. And after it was compiled, I need to then execute it. Now, before you execute the payload, you need to, of course, set up two things. First, you need to set up your shell code with this command, msf venom minus p x64 shell reverse tcp. Of course, the payload can be anything. Air host is going to be ETH0, airport is going to be 4444, just for testing purposes. We have the format to be raw, minus minus encrypt to be XOR, and minus minus encrypt minus key to be my key. In that case, I'm going to output that into shellcode.bin. And now on the left, on the right, sorry, hand side of things, I'm going to host that with simple Python HTTP server. The last thing is obviously our uh, Netcat listener, so I'm gonna run that, go back to command VM, and the last thing is to start the program which I called sor.exe. I'm gonna run it, it says that it successfully retrieved 460 bytes of the encrypted shell code, and if you go back, you can see a valid request was a valid reverse shell on my system. So with just few prompts, I can count it, it's like five prompts. I was able to create, actually Grok was able to create, a valid shellcode runner, which implement some of the most known techniques like staging over HTTP, which I already have a video about it, you can check that later on, short decryption, and essentially using a more evasive way on how to execute the shellcode itself. Now I'm sure if you go deeper with that and maybe ask him to do syscalls or more advanced stuff, I'm sure that this AI can give some false positive and fail here and there, but I generally see this AI as a game changer because first it's not censored and the code is quite good and it works right off the bat. So I'm going to be continue testing these kind of AIs. I'm going to continue doing videos like that. And I want to say thank you to all of you watching this video. If you find it useful, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button, the notification bell. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.